about me. Please don't just laugh and clap right now. This is serious. I'm not delirious. I've waited very patiently just to let you know who should run the show. Cause we all know these are the facts. Nothing to retract, nothing to abstract. Concluding in the song, we'll say no one's better than you.
Everybody and welcome to the stream. I hope we're all doing super well, super great. Uh, I hope you're all feeling good, feeling feeling fantastic today. We're cooking. We're cooking. Oh, she cooking, as this as the kids say. Uh, we're playing. We're playing Gary's mod today. I I've been cooking a lot lately. I've been cooking a lot, and I want to share that with you. And I only know one way to cook on the internet, and that's with Gary's mod but before we get into that today is a cooking themed stream uh hello fresh is sponsoring today's stream and excitingly and i've pushed this so hard you'll probably already know if you've come here it works in canada it works in canada it i have been pushing <laughs> for so long i no kidding y'all i have been pushing to get codes that work ca in canada for ages with hello fresh because i know a lot of people in my chat have been like, hey, I want to get on that HelloFresh deal. I want to hop on that. It doesn't work in the country I abide in. And I, I I, finally, I finally am here to tell you I got a code. Doesn't just work in Canada. Also works in the UK, in Australia, New Zealand, Germany, and France. All over the place. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely really excited about this. I've been pushing for this for a while. Um, pretty much every other HelloFresh uh, uh, campaign in, 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 in the, in my greater circle, right? Not just me, but in the people around, uh, has been locked to the U S I'm very excited to get this out, uh, for, 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 for more folks. Cause I genuinely think HelloFresh is a fantastic, uh, uh, a fantastic like, uh, service, excuse me, I'm looking for the words. Um, I, I have been cooking a lot for myself recently and it has been such a grind because, the scariest thing to me is buying something to make something new and then chickening out because I'm worried I'm going to mess it up or like being nervous and waiting a few extra nights. And then the food goes bad. That happens to me all the time. I have wasted so much money because I just leave the food in the fridge and then it goes bad before I can turn it into anything. And HelloFresh is genuinely, it is a affordable way to learn how to cook and get some delicious food out of it because they they send to your door uh, and I'll show how this all works later. We're going to order a box on stream later and then I'll be unboxing it on stream later on. But um, the way the way it works is they send you the exact por pre portioned ingredients. So there's no waste. You just get what you need to make the meal and then you learn how to make it. So you just have that knowledge forever. It's, 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 it's like, un it's, <laughs> hey gamers, it's like unlocking a new crafting recipe in the game of Minecraft, you see. It's, it, it opens up a lot of opportunities. And learning to cook has been really amazing for me because I love food. I, I love food so much. And hang on, I gotta change the corner art because Duke's not here today. I love food and I want to be able to craft it like in Minecraft. Where's a good like? Zoop, that'll do. Uh, I want to be able to craft it as in the Minecraft because I, I I like to eat good food. I don't like to spend a lot of money. Y'all, I'm poor. I'm not going to lie. I don't got dollars. Twitch streaming? You think you make the big bucks with the Twitch streaming? Not unless you're a the ninja, okay? It's 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 a hard life, but it's one that I enjoy greatly. And I I I I got to I got to pinch my pennies a little bit. And HelloFresh is a great opportunity for just that because y'all, this is a good ass discount. Like I'm not just plugging this. I know people in a similar financial situation to myself, including one of my mods, like Val Breakbeat Bun. Again, like, like just going into this because it's genuinely 
very like a good deal <laughs> to learn how to cook. So, uh, 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 I, I, like I said, I've been cooking a lot. So today I'm going to be sharing some recipes of my own that I've been making in my house lately. Uh, later on, we're going to order a HelloFresh box. I'll show y'all like the options they have, the different stuff. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be unboxing that in, uh, in a week or so when that arrives. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I, I really do like HelloFresh. Uh, it, it's good. You feel like you may know the answer already, but is HelloFresh on vegetarian options? You know it is, baby. They got vegetarian options. They got vegan options. They got pescatarian options. They got all sorts. They have everything. And not only that, it's not random what you get. It's not like a loot box where you just get the random stuff and you just have to take what you get. You get to pick the foods you get. This isn't a, 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 a grab bag. You get to actually go in and be like, oh, I want some of this. You can have it, I think, pick for you. I'd have to check that. Uh, I know that there is an option, though, to just choose what you want to get. So you get what you want. Still waiting on the kosher menu. Oh, do they not have a kosher menu? I'm sure. I can't say that. <laughs> I'm sure they have kosher options on the menu, at the very least. Um, that's what I can say. Um, but yeah, HelloFresh, tons of options. Really good opportunity. Uh, let's, let's get into it before we begin as well. Uh, beyond that, I would like to thank, uh, others, folks who support me beyond HelloFresh. We've also got y'all supporting me, uh, subscribers. Thank you so much. Monthly tippers. We've got girl stream team, uh, uh, Andromeda, K90, and just some trans girl. Thank you all so much for the, uh, for, 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 for that Mon monthly tips. If you don't know, they, they, uh, are like a subscription, but I get all of the money instead of just half of it, like with a subscription. Very helpful. If you want to do that, you can type exclamation point donate. It is an option in the donation menu. You just click it and it re, re uh, it recurs the, the donation every month. Let's put into Gary's mod. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've been cooking a lot, genuinely quite a bit. Oh, thank you so much, Girl Stream Team, for gifting a sub to Kira Cat. Thank you very much. But yeah, um, uh, uh, I have, as I said, I've been cooking a lot lately and it is so nice to like really get in there. I, I finally am in a position where I think I'm able to like regularly make really tasty food, uh, which is very important to me as somebody who's just, I am picky. I live in a town that has no like fresh ingredient options. Uh, so if I want fresh food and I like fresh food, I have to cook it myself. I have to, I have to get my own fingers in the, in, in the, in the, in the slop or whatever. And, uh, uh, and I have to, I gotta make it happen. And I'm finally in a position where I think I can, I can do that. So I want to share some recipes today that I think are, let's open up Gary's mug, that I think are easy to make, affordable, and f just delicious. So let's, let's hop into Gary's Mod. The reason I'm doing Gary's Mod is because Gary's Mod is my lifeblood. Gary's Mod, I, I know so deeply, so so tenderly. Uh, and I, I just, I think this is going to be the best way to, to get across, get across these recipes. The most efficient way possible. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's hop in here. We're going to have some errors in the pop, pop left. Though. Oops, excuse me. Don't mind that. Gary's Mod. I don't play this game enough. I wish there was more stuff for like me to do in Gary's Mod. I used to play Gary's Mod so much that I I have 2,000 hours. I used to play Half-Life 2 roleplay specifically. I once got, oh my God, the worst thing in the world. So for, if you don't know, Half-Life 2 roleplay is like serious roleplay. It's like the kind of thing you find on like forum message boards times 10. Like people take it really seriously. And I once got grounded for three weeks when I was a kid. I stand to this day, it was not... It was not a, a grounding that was uh, warranted, mom. But I got grounded for three weeks. I had to quit a server I was playing on because I missed so much stuff. That I was so out of the loop. It would have taken me ages to get back into it. I that's how like so like I was like on it every single day. I had to be in there. I was I was married to Gary's mod Half Life Two RP. Um, but that's not what we're doing today. We're cooking. So. The thing I want to start with uh, for food here, uh, something I've been, the first thing that I've, I, the, this is like the first proper meal I've made that I can do, that I do regularly. I do this about pretty much monthly with Duke and I, and it is unbelievably delicious and it's so easy. All you need is a crock pot and like a regular pot for potatoes. We're making, or we're making a roast, a outside round roast specifically. So for a roast, you want to slow cook it in your crock pot. 
Let's get a crock pot here. Um, let's just, uh, here, this isn't big enough. You need a, you need a decent sized crock pot. Don't get one of the super tiny ones. Cause those are just basically going to be useless to you. Get like a decent sized crock pot. Where's the, um, bear with me here. I haven't played this in a while. I got to remember where the making things bigger. Inflator? No, that's for rag dolls. I think I have a mod that lets you make things bigger. Uh, that's not it. Oh, come now. I know I have this. Maybe I didn't save it. Might have to do something else then. Maybe I don't have this anymore. I used to have a mod that let you make props bigger. But if I don't have that, we're going to have to figure something else out. Because this crockpot's just not big enough. Found out a suspension transmission. This is vehicles. Yeah, I just don't have it. Unless it's in utilities? Yeah, I just don't have it. Okay. Uh, no worries in that case. That's not our crockpot for today. We need something bigger then. Uh, let's see. Something like get a nice crock pot here. You know, we could build a crock pot, really. Let's let's build our own crock pot. Uh, let's go into uh, let's see, the Gary's mod. Here we go. Let's go into like into here. I'm sure that we can find something crock pot ish. That's that's okay. I want something like large. We might have to glue something together here for our crock pot. Um, now you might have to do this at home with your meal as well. Yeah, and make sure your, your crock pot is sized correctly. And you might have to do a little bit of crafting in Gary's mod to get there. How big is this? Not big enough. That's not good enough. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they would be bagels. That's like food! Where does fish and chips come from? The deep primordial soup? Hey, hang on! <laughs> hey, you're making jokes! I heard about those! <laughs> We need like a nice big, here, 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 here. Can I get one? I know I can get a one by. There we go. All right, here's the base of our crock pot. We're gonna spawn four corners as well. We're gonna make ourselves a crock pot. All right. So our crock pot's gonna be square, that's fine. You know, crock pot shape doesn't matter. Regular ones are kind of weirdly oval shaped. Which I, I think is, uh, is you know, unnecessary. We're going to shape it like this. All right. Line this up. Now, it's been a while since I made a crock pot in Gmod. You'll have to bear with me. Really just go ahead and line that right up. And you know what? Where's the copy paste tool? Where's the copy paste tool? Copy. There we go. Look at that. That's advanced crock pot creation all right so here's our crock pot um well this looks like it's like a ceramic crock pot you don't want a ceramic crock pot i think that would explode uh where's the material thing there we go there we go uh hide that over there there's our crock pot now your crock pot you want to set this to high uh, there's, you know, crock pots typically have like a low, high, and, and off. You just want to set this to high, turn it on, and you want to cook an outside round roast for like eight hours, about. So we're going to put this outside round roast in here, and we're going to cook that for about eight hours. Uh, eight hours, you're going to get such a tender roast, it is literally going to physically fall apart when you take it out. So this is going to take a while. We're going to just go ahead and, and lid that off, and we're going to worry about that at the end of the stream, because this has to go for a while. So we're going to worry about that later. While we're waiting for that to go, I'll show y'all a different recipe. And you know what? I'll use this piece here. I'm going to show y'all. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'm going to show y'all how to make uh, some delicious chicken. All right. We're going to do some very moist chicken here. Uh, this is perfect for shredded chicken, although you can just eat it as the chicken itself, which I often do. So let's get a uh, let's 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 make this into a pan. That's too long. That's too long. That's far too short. Those are not tall enough. Hang on. So long. There we go. That's what we want. There we go. We're going to make a pan. We're going to get the duplicator. And glue all of our, our pan parts. All right, we're going to just put these around like that and do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, now, the type of pan you use, 
in my experience, doesn't matter. People will tell you to use cast iron pans. I'm going to be real. Never used one. Uh, too much maintenance for me. I like to stick my stuff in the dishwasher and be done. I like convenience. And that's what these recipes are going to be about. These are going to be convenient recipes. Oh, speaking of recipes, I forgot. You don't just stick the meat in the crock pot. Hang on. I'm so sorry. We're going to stick back to the roast here. This, ro this roast is currently drying out and dying. Uh, you want to put water in it. Um, so you, you need to fill it with water. So, uh, 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 here we've got, um, we've got, we've got water here. Now the water that you add here, how do I, how do I actually spawn the water? I have no clue. Is it in here? Do you want a remover? How do I add water? You can control nearly everything, but you want to make it easier to sell to miss the menu and paste it in. Now, when you're cooking, you might have to go into the settings and discover how to create water. If you're plumbing, you know, if you've got like that kind of plumbing setup. Oh, G water. Here it is. Okay, perfect. So we're going to put water in. Now you want for your water. Let's take a look at this. Uh, you want, whoa. Oh, I have the remover, I see. So for your water, you wanna fill up the roast uh, a pretty decent amount. You wanna fill it so it's covering uh, just about like two thirds of the roast, I would say. So once you've got about two thirds of the roast covered, uh, here's, the, here's where this changes. Uh, with the normal roast, right? to some of this water that's spilled. You might spill when you're making your roast. Uh, with a normal roast, any recipe on the internet is just going to tell you to stop it here. This is where I change things up. I, and this is my mom's recipe, I would like to recommend to you get yourself a gravy packet. Instant brown gravy. Now, instant gravy sucks. Don't get me wrong. But we're not using this to make gravy. You're going to want to get your instant gravy. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change the water here. To, to gravy color. And you want to put in uh, about two packets of instant gravy. And the reason for that is this is basically, it, this is going to simmer in the gravy as it's cooking. And the roast drippings, there's two packets of gravy, the roast drippings are going to merge with that. You know, how you might make normal gravy, right? You just get the roast drippings, you mix it up with some, some stuff. The easy way is to mix the drippings up with a packet of gravy. But this way, ahead of time, you are mixing these together. And it's going to drip into the gravy. It's, the gravy is going to season the roast. It straight up is delicious. So that is when we can finally put this on. So again, two-thirds of water with gravy in. I recommend mixing the gravy with the water before you pour it in. So you don't have to, like, worry about getting around the roast to mix it. But yeah, eight hours, we're going to stick that on for. Okay, now we can actually move past this recipe. Apologies for that. Is roast usually made with an entire horse? No, it's usually made with an outside round beef roast. Um, we're, we're improvising today. All right, so back to the chicken recipe. While that's cooking, uh, the chicken, the way we're going to be making this, let's get a pan. This is not just going to be pan seared uh, chicken. Pan seared chicken's great. It's very delicious. That's how we're going to be making some pork chops later. But for this chicken, chicken, you don't want to dry out your chicken, right? Nobody likes dry chicken, and it's it's really easy to get that dried out. But if you pan sear it, a lot of the time you're going to be sitting there waiting on, a, on, you know, like a low to medium heat for it to cook the whole way through, right? It takes a long time. So what we're going to be doing instead is we're going to be doing a combination pan fry slash sear and a, like, steam cook. So let me get a couple of slabs of chicken here. Get us a couple of chicken slabs. Can I get a couple chicken slabs? Yeah, get a couple slabs of chicken. Now, make sure your chicken, you know, you get nice, uh, uh, nice pink chicken. Make sure it's not slimy or nothing. Here, where's a good, good chicken? It's, that's not, that's too, that's too bright. That's too slimy, right? If your chicken's all slimy, it's gone bad. There we go. Nice couple of pieces of chicken. You want to put those in? Now, it's good to season your meat before you cook it while it's still raw. But I'm going to be real with you. Who has time for that? 
So when you put it on, while it's still nice and raw, right before, I usually do it right before I put it in the pan, you want to get some salt and pepper and, you know, dress these babies up. Uh, nothing crazy, just a little bit of salt and pepper. And you want to fry these in oil. In uh, uh, I, 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 you, I usually use um, uh, uh, a little bit for the pan sear, a little bit of like a, a your choice of oil, olive oil. Um, I've been using, um, what, what oil do we use, darling? Canola oil, that's the one. So a little bit of canola oil in here uh, to fry this up. There we go. That's a bit too much. <laughs> that's a bit too much canola oil. Uh, just a little bit, just enough to get the pan sear in, right? So get your canola oil in the pan and start with a, I want to say like three to four minutes on each side. You don't need to finish it, you know, swish it around a little bit. Uh, make sure, and then, you know, flip halfway. Make sure you're not spilling your oil anywhere because, you know, hot oil is bad. When you put your, uh, your, your chicken in here, by the way, I recommend moving it with tongs. It's just easiest. Make sure you always put your meat facing away from you. You want to hold it like this and lower it. See, that's what happens if you're not careful with your meat. You get covered in burning hot oil and it, and it hurts. So you want to, you want to take your, you want to take your, your, your meat and facing down, you want to lay it out from you like that with both slices of meat. Oh, 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 face away and lay it down. Beautiful. All right. Once we've got a sear on both of these, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get a lid. All right. Now I don't have a lid in my house. Uh, so I'm, I literally use a second pan for this. I don't have a pan. I don't have a lid for my pan. I use a second pan. And whoa, <laughs> I get a second pan. And what you want to do is you want to get chicken stock. You want to get chicken stock. Now you can get chicken stock from the store in a big old box. It is no problem. Let's get some chicken stock real quick here. Just uh, lighten that up. I don't know color theory. Sure, that's chicken stocky. You want to get some chicken stock and you want to fill this. Uh, you want to do like a third, maybe maybe half of the, the pan filled with chicken stock. It's a real recipe, by the way. Jokes aside. Um, you want to put in good amount of chicken stock, right? And that is going to, uh, that is going to cook and it's going to absorb into the chicken. What the fuck is going on here? That's going to absorb into the chicken. And then you want to top it off with your lid or in my case, your second pan. Okay. Now what this is going to do is it's going to trap the steam inside with that chicken stock and it's going to cook fast. So this is going to speed up your cooking a ton and you've got that delicious sear on the chicken. So now you give that maybe 10 minutes, okay? About 10 minutes of cooking. Once it's done, you lift up your pan. You're going to want to cut these down the middle to see if they're still pink inside. If they're still pink, slap this bad boy back on. If you're not done, by the way, if it, 10 minutes hasn't gone up, do not lift this pan because you're going to let all the steam go and all that cooking is going to go away. So only once about 10 minutes have passed, can you check on them? If they're still pink, leave them for another, you know, couple of minutes. Once they're not pink at all anymore, you get rid of this pan. You get yourself a nice plate. You get your chicken. Um, if, if it's not seared enough for your taste, you can take this chicken stock and pour it into another container. But for now, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to pretend we got a nice perfect sear here. Um, and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to lay this on a plate, on a delicious plate. And that is some delicious chicken. Now, like I mentioned, this is great for shredded chicken because it's so moist. It just falls apart. It cooks super fast, no dryness. Uh, but you can also just eat it straight out of the thing. Like you don't need, you don't need to do anything fancy with it. The salt and pepper is all the seasoning you really need on this. Um, I made this recently for Duke and I. I have put this in enchiladas before. I have, you know, just eaten and it's on its own. There's so many different uses. Uh, huge, huge recommend. For real. This is delicious chicken. It looks, doesn't it just look incredible? That is a tasty couple of chickens. Now we're going to keep our pan out here because I want to show you all how to make some delicious pork chops. All right. This is straight up. I made this last night for the first time. This blew my mind. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. This blew my mind. So let's get a couple of pork chops. Um, now pork chops, uh, these ones, we're just going to be sear frying. Uh, because it's not chicken, you don't have to worry so much about getting the salmonella. So we're not going to worry about the steam cooking or nothing like that. We're going to get a couple pork chops. Let's see. Let's see. We're, we're, we're going through our, we're going through our local shopping mall. Where's a good pork? 
There's a good pork. There's a good pork. So this is our pork chop, right? You want to toss these into the pan. Um, and you want to season these. Well, let's season them ahead of time. Like I said, it's good practice. Again, who's got time for that? Now, the seasoning for this, salt and pepper naturally. However, you want to use a little something different. I actually have to pull this up. Because this is not, this is such a specific ingredient that I can't just show this, like, a a approximate. You want to go get this. Hang on. I'm pulling it on screen. You want this. This is Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning. This stuff is delicious. Always, I just recommend having a, a, a little thing of this in your in your kitchen at all times. This stuff is so good. You can put this on all sorts of meats. So you want to take that, Cavender's green, Greek, I mean, seasoning, and you want to season this with that. Once this is seasoned with salt, pepper, and the Greek seasoning, lay it on the side that you seasoned it with. We're assuming you didn't pre-season, so lay it on the side you first seasoned, and then you can season the other side. Season both sides. Let them pan fry at about medium heat. Uh, again, we're using canola oil here. Let me let me get some canola oil. That's not enough oil. Yeah, good amount of canola oil. And I want to say we're going to do this probably for about five minutes aside again. Um, you just want to, same as the chicken, you want to get them nice and seared. Cut them down the middle to make sure they're not pink. Uh, once they're, you know, fully cooked through, you're good. You can get a meat thermometer if you got one of those. I don't have one of those. This is, that's expensive. You got to pay for that. Who wants, who wants to get crazy with that? I, I spilled my oil everywhere. Just everywhere. And that's pretty much that. Once that's done, you're done. You're just, it's, ju it's just that easy. You just pay and sear these with some of that seasoning. They come out so, so juicy. Um... Especially if you still do the pan thing where you cover it and steam fry it. You don't have to have the chicken stock. When you when you like let the steam go in like that, it, it keeps everything really moist and it cooks really fast. You want to just, like, again, this is a lid or a second pan. Just cover it up while you're cooking. It is fantastic. These, oh my god, last night when I made this, it was so, like... I never eat the fat on food, okay? You know how, like, you know how with, with pork chops a lot of time, there's, like, a thick thing of fat on the side here, right? Twinkle Tees, thank you for this up. It's, like, a thick, like, ring of fat on the edges of pork chops, right? I never eat that. I think it's bad. It's a bad texture. This cooked so well with the, with the steam cooking like this, it literally just, there was no bad texture. It just had flavor. It was so good. I, 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 like, the juice dripped out, and I just, like, Put, covered my fork in it and just like licked the fork and I like had a had a I had a ratatouille moment it was so so good so yeah big recommend on both of those so those are my two like those are my two like fried meat sort of pan fried meat recipes again just covering it up letting it like fry with the steam to cook it faster that also cooks the in internals it's really good it's 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 just delicious uh let's check on our pot roast my pot roast is my favorite food probably uh, on the planet when you make it with this gravy that we talked about again so the gravy is mixed with gravy packets but you do it while it's cooking so everything gets you know mixed up together once it's done you want to take your roast out again eight hours cooking for this this thing should be it should fall apart in your like in your fingers I once cooked it for 12 hours and it literally I like poked it with the forks and it just it, it I couldn't get it out with the forks it would fall apart I had to use a spatula eight hours is perfect where it's so tender that it will just melt in your mouth, but it's solid enough where you can actually cut it reasonably. Once that's done, you want to take your gravy and you want to get a pot. Now we're going to use a pan for this. You want to use a pot here. Let's um, let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna we're gonna get a pot. This is now a pot. So you want to get your pot, and you want to take the crock pot now these usually have a removable thing in them these usually have like a removable top part so you take all your gravy and water which is now mixed and the roast drippings have mixed into it and you pour that into your pot now when you do this 
your gravy is going to be really thin. It's going to be more of a roux than anything, right? It's not really going to be nice, thick gravy. The gravy packets will have helped to thicken it up significantly, but it's not going to be all the way. What you want to do is you want to either get some flour or some uh, uh, cornstarch. And you want to mix that in with some water and pour it in slowly. So what that does is the flour or cornstarch, you're basically making a slurry to thicken up the gravy. So let's uh, let's get a pot. Let's get another pot. And you want to have barely any water in this. Like, let me let me let me get some good old fashioned blue water. You want barely any water in this because the more water you put on, the more it's going to water down your gravy. Right? You want your gravy to be nice and gravy-ish. So we get a little tiny bit of water, and then you want flour or cornstarch. So we'll we'll get some we'll get some. Uh, We'll get some flour here. I usually use flour just because I have it on hand. Because, you know, flour is useful for so much. Uh, I usually do about a tablespoon. You kind of want to eyeball it. And then you want to mix this up. Let's, uh, let's, get a, let's get a poll here. Let's, you want to mix this up together. You want to whisk it really aggressively until there is no clumps. If you have clumps, what's going to happen is they're not going to dissolve in the gravy. Because your gravy's still hot. Flour does not dissolve in hot things. So you have to make sure this is no clumps here. And then you want to slowly pour it in while whisking your gravy. And that will thicken it right up. You can also use an additional gravy packet here to thicken it instead. But the problem therein is it, while it'll still be delicious, it'll start to taste more like instant gravy. If you cook it with the instant gravy, like you cook the roast with the instant gravy, you don't taste any of the instant taste. It's not there because it's been cooking for so long, it's been marinating into the meat and the meat has been leaking out into it. They've been merging and letting all those flavors co-mingle. So if you thicken it with that, it'll work and it'll melt, it'll like dissolve in the hot water, but it'll start to taste like instant gravy and that's that's not very good. Uh, does HelloFresh send you a fizz gun? No, sorry, you do have to get your own. Let's remove that. So once this gravy's done, you want to get your roast, you can go ahead and serve yourself up, but what is a roast? What is a roast? What is a roast without potatoes? So we're going to make some mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are like my favorite food. What is happening? There's some weird like LOD stuff going on. Anyway, mashed potatoes are like my favorite food. I love mashed potatoes. With this roast, it is such an incredible combination. And I'm not just going to make any mashed potatoes. We're going to make some really good mashed potatoes so let's get ourselves a nice big pot again here we're gonna we're gonna take the roast pot actually the crock pot you don't want to make this is not this is not no longer a crock pot this is a regular pot now stay stay with the stay with the stay with kayfabe this is a regular pot now here let's let's get a different material to differentiate differentiate it here get like a nice pot that's not a pot that's like a garage door that's concrete that's still concrete. There we go. So here's our pot, right? This is our stovetop pot. What you want to do is you want to get a... Oh, I actually get a five-pound bag of potatoes. Here's our potatoes. Okay, you want to get a five-pound bag of potatoes. You want to peel these ahead of time. These are going to be yellow flesh potatoes. You can tell these are yellow flesh. Uh, yellow flesh are less starchy than russets. A lot of people say r russets, right? Russets are the go-to for a lot of potato meals. But I stand by that yellow flesh potatoes are way better for mashed potatoes because they hold their shape better. And again, they're less starchy. And you don't want too much starch in your mashed potatoes uh, or else it gets that grainy feeling. You ever had mashed potatoes that are kind of grainy? That's the starch. So you get your yellow flesh potatoes. You have your husband peel them for you. And then you want to go ahead and put those in the pot with some water. You want to make sure they're they're totally covered. And you want to boil that water. So once the water's boiling and the potatoes are all in, they're nice and skinned. I usually dice them as well. They'll, they'll cook faster if they're smaller. That's just physics. Set all those in. Again, this is about a five pound bag. Uh, five pounds is too much. Like five pound bag is definitely too much for a single person. Uh, even a family of two like Duke and I, we we have room for seconds, but this is so delicious. We need to make sure there is seconds. We, we insist on seconds. This is a self mashing pot. So we're gonna go ahead and put some water in here. Nice amount of water. Oh, that's flour. Hang on. Oh, Jesus Christ, aggressive. The flour is aggressive. 
We've got some nice water in there. There we go. Once it's all boiled up and, and yummy and delicious, you want to mash those potatoes. So I usually, uh, I start with a masher. And then if you've got one, a hand blender is fantastic. So let's start with our masher just to get started. And then if you've got a hand blender, they are so good to keep it creamy because otherwise you get clumps, right? So let's get our masher here. Let's see, welding tool. There we go. So you want to get your masher in there. Mash your potato. Well, obviously we drain the water first before you mash it. Drain our water. There we go. Drain the water. Get a colander for this. Uh, it's you know, it's a lot better. Looks like some of our potatoes got lost in the, got lost in the in the here. We're gonna. I don't know where they went. <laughs> All right, water's drained. We're gonna go ahead and start mashing. Now this is just the potatoes on their own. We just kind of want to squish them up a little bit. Once you've started about halfway through your mashing, whoa, whoa, whoa. Once you're about halfway through your mashing, your frame rate's gonna drop really heavily. But at that point, at that point, once you unweld everything, you let you let everything relax. You wanna add butter. I usually do about half a stick of butter. Uh, so we'll get ourselves, uh, uh, let's see, a nice stick of butter here. There we go, stick of butter. Uh, half a stick of butter, yeah, more like a third. A third of a stick of butter. That's gonna start melting in the hot potatoes. Now here is the, the special treat. Cream cheese. You want to get uh, specifically for sizing here. Let me get a thing of cream cheese. Let me let me pull up some cream cheese. I recommend uh, I recommend urban garlic cream cheese. Uh, but if you just have those herbs around the house, you can manually add those yourself. Again, this is for like ease of of cooking, right? This is this is not necessarily here. This is what it, this is what I get. Uh, this is uh, urban garlic cream cheese. This is the container I usually purchase for it. You want to take about half of this for a five pound bag. Uh, the reason I do urban garlic is because, again, this is for convenience. I don't want to go and buy a whole bunch of spices and have them and make sure I'm doing them right. All I know is this tastes good. You can use regular cream cheese as well or whatever you want, but this is the one that I think def like tends to, to, to work the best for me. So we're going to take our half of a tube of, of, of cream cheese. And we're going to throw that in with the potatoes, which have disappeared again. Our butter has gone and melted there. As you can see, the cream cheese is not going to quite melt. You want to mash that in with your disappearing potatoes. Put those back in. Get our masher and just mash that all up. And again, halfway through, you want to get like a hand blender. If you can. Oh, Jesus Christ. You want to get a hand blender. So this, we're going to... <laughs> I don't have a hand blender, so we're not gonna I'm not gonna show you how to do it. But if you have a hand blender, that will make sure there's no clumps. And there you go, that's your mashed potatoes. So cream cheese, butter, and potatoes. No milk is uh specifically something I, I I do here. Milk, in my opinion, for mashed potatoes, all it ends up doing is making your mashed potatoes kind of runnier. Uh my least favorite mashed potatoes are are potatoes that that hang on. My least favorite mashed potatoes are mashed potatoes that do this. I hate that. See, that sucks. If your potatoes do that, you got bad potatoes. Where's my, where's my water remover? I can't, my frame rate can't handle this. Delicious, okay. You want potatoes that are nice and thick. Now, the nice thing about the cream cheese is it's also gonna thicken up your potatoes uh, on top of the lack of milk, right? So once your potatoes are done, you go ahead and plate that up with some slices of roast. You pour in your delicious gravy. I recommend just slathering it on there. The gravy is the star of the show. These potatoes, um, I, I'm under the impression that like if you're gonna make good mashed potatoes, they should be edible without gravy. And these potatoes absolutely are. They're so creamy. They're delicious. The cream cheese gives them a lot of flavor, a lot of pop. Um, a lot of people put cheddar cheese in their potatoes, personally. I don't think it melts fast enough to really incorporate properly. And on top of that, I think the cream cheese is a subtler flavor that melds with the potatoes better. I'm not trying to sound like, uh, what's the word? I'm not trying to sound pretentious here. I legitimately think. Uh, I don't think that cr cheddar cheese is a good mashed potato uh, uh, like mixer because cheddar cheese doesn't melt super well. Um, 
Cream cheese is already a slop, so it'll just incorporate in there really well. There's lots of other things to put cheddar on with, like mashed, like, or with potatoes in general, but mashed potatoes, not, 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 not my favorite. Not my, not my favorite combo. All right, so that is. We've got three recipes. We got the roast. I make this monthly. Delicious. I'm, again, this roast will fall apart as you cut into it. Like it's so good. We've got the chicken and the pork. These will also, like the chicken especially, you can shred this with your bare hands. Uh, the pork is going to be a little like stronger just because pork is a tougher meat, but it is so juicy. These are all so juicy. Um, pork can be a little dry. Uh, sorry, not pork. Excuse me. The roast. The roast can be a little dry at times. It's not like noticeably dry. It doesn't hold moisture as well as these other meats. Um, you're slow cooking it in literal liquid though, which is going to help a ton with that. It's just how roasts are. They're, they're, they're a fairly, um, they're a drier, they're a drier meat, but the gravy is going to just sell the show. These don't need gravy. This, I would not eat this without the gravy, admittedly. Well, that's not true. I would, and it would be delicious, but I would pr strongly prefer to eat it with the gravy. The gravy is the star of the show here. Just putting a roast in a slow cooker and making gravy from that is unbelievably satisfying. What's going on with this, like, popping anyway that is my my three meat recipes i make these all the time uh, uh well i make the roast all the time the chicken and the in the pork chops i've just been like experimenting with um i made pork chops for the second time last night and that's where this recipe comes in and i like i i kind of blew myself away with how delicious it was it was so juicy it was just oh delicious so big recommend there big recommend now i've got more recipes i want to show y'all Got a couple of them, you know, uh, some simple ones, some a little bit more complicated ones. Before we do that, y'all, I think it's time. I would like to show y'all the HelloFresh experience. Maybe we'll look at some recipes on there and throw those together too. But yeah, I, I, I genuinely, I make these foods. I recommend them. Uh, but you know what? I, uh, I'm, I'm hungry for some new stuff. And this is not a joke. HelloFresh has been kind enough to send a box my way for this promotion. Uh, we're going to order it together. I'm going to show y'all like how the website works, how everything goes. And I want to pick something neat because like I, I haven't seen everything on this menu. And quite frankly, I've been craving new stuff lately. So I'm very excited to, to go through this and, and see what they got. So this is the HelloFresh website on .ca because I'm in Canada land. Um, and uh, yeah, you choose the meals you want. You create your box. You get weekly deliveries. You get your seasonal fresh ingredients. Uh, th that's like the most exciting thing for me. I, like I said, I live in a place that has no fresh ingredients and I, I, I need it. I need freshness in my food. I'm tired of McDonald's. I'm tired of pizza. I, I want some delicious homemade meals and being able to cook has really changed my life in that regard. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Now these are pre-portioned, so you're not going to be spilling your stuff everywhere. Like in Gmod. All right. There's two people in our house. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll get like a five recipe. This is five meals for two people per, yeah, we'll do a big old, we'll be a big old box. Uh, now what kind of recipes do we like? That's a good question. I love quick and easy. Huge. I do like my meats. I don't need to be mostly meat. There's a the vegetarian and pescatarian options. I think I'm just going to stick with quick and easy and see what they have for me. Um, oh, don't, don't put the code in here. Hang on. I don't use my own code. <laughs> Why is it put my own code in here? Hang on, hang on, hang on. How did it do that? I just went to the website. Hang on. I can't use my own code. They told me not to use my own code. <laughs> they told me not to do this. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of this. <laughs> Why can't I? Do I have to go to incognito mode? <laughs> How did it put it in there? There. All right. Incognito will do it. That's funny. They specifically told me not to do that. So <laughs> I have to make sure that doesn't happen. They told me if I use my own link, you would automatically put it in there. But I didn't use my link. I guess I clicked it earlier. Um, so you saw the discount there on the bright side. Well, if I, you know, this is like the base price for a big, but I'm getting a big box here also. But the, uh, you know, fifth, uh, 65 bucks off. So like here, that's, I, I should like show this off because most people are probably going to be getting three recipes per week. Let's be real. Like 30 bucks for three meals. That's like 10 bucks a meal. That is way cheaper than ordering out. 
and you get to actually learn how to cook these recipes. The, the knowledge is forever. They can never take that away from you. 10 bucks a meal. No, I'm doing five, so it's a little little more than five bucks, or sorry, a little more than 10 bucks a meal for, for, for five, but like genuinely a really good deal. Whoa, whoa, why we got black screen? There we go. So I wanna do a big old, big old box. I wanna do a big old yummy box. We're gonna hit quick and easy. See what they got. How do I um progress? <laughs> do I click these now? I don't think so. I'm gonna put in my code they gave me and I'm gonna move the camera off the screen so you guys can't see it because I have my own special code I'm supposed to use. So bear with me. Oh, I'm still in incognito. It's like, why am I not logged into my email? Hang on. Those meals are two serve. That's true. Yeah, what Val said, those are two serving meals. They're nice, nice chunky. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Given how I tend to be, I'm probably going to eat both servings, like, in one. <laughs> but, like, th they are good. Closer to $5 to $6 a serving. Yeah. No. Like, Val is, Val is not just talking out of her ass. Val, like, ate a lot of HelloFresh a while back when, when like, everybody was doing HelloFresh uh, uh, things. Val ate a lot of HelloFresh. Let me, um, let me, let me find my code. Hold, hold on. Okay, give me my special code. And then I will put it in. It worked. Excellent. I need to like, where's the next page? <laughs> I need to hit next before I come back so you can't see this code and steal it from me. Um, I think I do have to click. Oh, I have to hit select this plan, obviously. I'm silly. That was on me. All right. So yeah, uh, you 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 hit select this plan right here, and then it tells you to input your email. I'm gonna. Well, no, I can just do my my. Uh, well, <laughs> I just put in my uh, my 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 business email here. Oh, I didn't have the thing up. Good, because I accidentally showed my personal emails off <laughs> for a brief second. Uh, yeah. So you hit select plan on the first page, which I will go back to again, but I'm gonna drag it away first so you don't. So I don't show off my emails. Select this plan. And then I drag it away. Yes. And then you type in your email. Uh, and then you go ahead and create your account. You make a password here, which I don't want that to show either. I gotta like, keep going back and forth here. All right. I got to put my address in. Bear with me. That's definitely not going to be shown on screen. We're, we're going, we're going to purple mode here. Use my delivery address. Leave at the back. To oh, look at that. Oh, they have, I can't show this because I don't want to show off my, my stuff, but they have an option to leave the stuff at the back door. You can choose, leave with concierge, leave on the front porch, front door or back door. We're, we're the back door. So that's perfect. All right. Check out. I will add my PayPal account. And there we go. Oh man, I'm on incognito. I gotta type in my PayPal information. I gotta get my mobile phone code. Hang on. <laughs> I gotta get a one-time code because I'm in incognito mode. My code is 6969,420,000. Do All right, my payment info is added. I'll get an email confirmation shortly. Okay, I think I can choose my meals now. Make sure I don't have anything that gives away my address on this page before I show it. I think we're okay. Scroll around real quick. I think I'm good, and I think there's nothing on here that shows my address, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up. Dude, can I get a can I get a second pair of eyes on this? There's nothing that shows our address on here, right? I think we're good. So far. I think we're good. Okay, so I can pull this back up. <laughs> uh, just to remind y'all, like the the process, it's just you select your plan, then you just put in your email, then you put in your address, then you put your payment, and then you're on this screen. Sorry, I want to show this, like, to show the actual process. I know in the past people have asked me how it works, and I haven't been able to show that, so I want to make it clear. But 
Uh, Sophie will probe show, probe show the menu for this week, but you're cooking their pork and pepper enchilada. Oh, pork and pepper enchilada sounds good. Anyway, so yeah, let's uh, let's choose our meals. So these are the pre-selected ones they gave me. They gave me squash and bacon Alfredo. Do can I already make a lot of Alfredo? I might replace that one. Beef thyme meatballs and onion gravy. Ooh, onion gravy sounds good. Peanutty Indonesian inspired stir fry. I'm not into peanuts, so I might get rid of that one. Homestyle turkey and dumpling soup. That one stays. That sounds delicious. This one is Scandi style. Sa oh, I've been craving salmon too. With apple and pickled onion salad. I might keep a couple of these. Um, so let me drop this one. And beef time meatballs with onion gravy. Oh, right. This first one. That's what I was going to drop. So we're going to drop these ones. So yeah, beef time meatballs and onion gravy. I'm into that. That's with smashed potatoes and green beans. Yeah, that's that's good. Turkey and dumpling soup, Scandi style salmon. All right, what else do they have? Thyme chicken and roasted zucchini. Indonesian inspired peanut satay. They're doing a lot of uh, peanut stuff. Bone and pork chops. I already got my pork chops. Herby roasted chicken, lobster ravioli and rosé sauce. Oh, lobster? Do we want lobster, darling? Do we want lobster? You want it in rosé sauce? I'm not sure. Not Never sure. Maybe we'll look into that. Steaks and herb butter, creamy chicken and fresh rigatoni. Let's see, sirloin steak and pancreas. Ooh. Chicken stew, stir fry. I might do this stir fry, the pork stir fry. I have been craving that lately. Chickpea and bulgur salad, noodle bowls, baked salmon, carb smart pork and mushroom soup, bunless beef burgers. Hey, hot take. If it ain't got a bun, it's not a burger. <laughs> this isn't a hello first thing. This is a cooking world thing. If it ain't got a bun, it's not a burger. That's just meat. That's a patty. Anyway, roasted apples and pork chops. Bulgur bowl. There's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff here. Chicken schnitzel. Ooh. <gasps> I want the sandwich! Bacon apple cheddar. Wait, bacon apple cheddar? Barbecue potato rounds and honey mustard dipper. What? This is neat. I want this. I want this. I don't even know what that is. I don't know you could put apple on a sandwich. That's crazy. That's a whole new world. All right. And one more thing. I got room for one more meal. Uh, pork chops, falafel, eggs, spinach, salad. Oh, there's so many options. They roll in new options as they go, by the way. This isn't just everything they have. Um, every week they have new stuff. So... If this doesn't look interesting to you, there's always stuff next week. I'm on the all meals tab, so we see everything. Click the listing, you can see what's in it. There we go. Oh yeah, wow, exactly. So bacon strips, russet potatoes for those chips, I imagine. Barbecue seasoning, white cheddar cheese, a, an apple, a gala apple. Baby spinach, the sandwich bun, uh, mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, whole grain mustard, and honey. That sounds really good. That sounds really good. Yeah, there's little apple slices in it. Yeah, I want that. I want that. I want to eat. My mouth is watering now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Noodle bowls. Bulgur salad. I kind of want this stir fry. What's in the stir fry? Snap peas, pork, jasmine rice, onion, celery. Ooh. Ooh. And the ground pork. I'm getting this, I think. Duke, you want some pork stir fry? I'm going to get some pork stir fry. All right. So that gives us three things in our box, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, five things. We got one in your box, one in your box. That's his menu. So if I hit, I'm going to move it off screen real quick while I hit save. Oh, my God. Chat, they got Valentine's Day stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to get this with my code. But oh my god, they got desserts. Oh, I gotta see if I'm allowed to get this. Hang on. No, I can't. <laughs> I'm not allowed to get them. I could. I'd have to pay extra. I don't got the money right now. Maybe after today, though, if y'all... I'm just saying, if y'all sign up for HelloFresh... Uh, yeah, that's... Wow. This looks so good. <laughs> These, so, oh my God. Duke loves these molten chocolate cakes. Okay, I'm going to hit save again. But I'm going to move it off screen so I don't show anything. Okay, I can't. 
hang on. I want to show this, but I like I gotta hide. A, I gotta hide the promo code <laughs> that they gave me. Hang on. I can show most of this page. I just gotta hide some of it. There we go. So this is the final order page. It says order completed. You'll receive your your meals on Thursday, February sixteenth. Hey, that's only four days. And then we got, uh, oh, I think I showed the code. I got my five meals here. I got to hit accept on this before somebody steals that code because I definitely just flashed it on screen. Oh, it's too late. It's too late. I already made the order. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right. Nice, quick, and easy. So, yeah, you can actually see the serving, so like the serving cost on the website there. I don't know if y'all saw that, but it will say the approximate serving size, like serving, like cost per serving of each meal. And it ends up being like seven bucks tops for Canadian dollars, by the way. Canadian dollars, it's like five bucks American. Like, that's, I, I, it, 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 did you know that it costs $50 to get Duke and I McDonald's down here? And I don't get a big order. Like I get two of the small cheeseburgers that cost like $2 each. What's wrong? And she's back and I'm back. <laughs> I'm not supposed to talk about that. Uh, point is, is affordable. Uh, yeah, again, what Val said, if you order, please at me, because I, I don't have anything to, like, tell me if you order stuff. So hit me up. Uh, yeah, I don't have a, I don't have an updater. Oh, oh Jax, thank you for the $30. Jax donated a generous $30. HelloFresh won't let me sign up because I've already signed up from this address, but... Hello, fresh, yummy, and tasty. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's for it's for new customers only. Please don't try and don't, don't try and gain the system. But yeah, I I genuinely do recommend this because like new you you get to learn how to make new stuff. It's a learning experience. It's like really affordable. It's just it's good stuff. Um. All right, let me show y'all some more recipes. So this next one I'm gonna show is a little bit more. Uh, well, no, well it's not that involved, but it's 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 got some more stuff. So first, you need a can of refried beans. Because baby, we're making bean and cheese burritos. I made these yesterday night, literally yesterday night. This is cheap, this is delicious, and it's super easy to make. So get yourself a can of refried beans. Uh, and, and fungus potion, thank you so much for the 300 bits. Here's the rest of the bits I bought. For, oh, bought for court, thank you. Um, so this is the, this is the, this is our refried beans. Uh, I usually, one can will get you like six, burritos five and a half burritos six, five to six um so yeah refried beans you want to get yourself a jar of salsa you're not going to need a ton of salsa you kind of want to match the amount of salsa that you have with with refried or like, like almost match it like i would say two-thirds of the amount you want to ma match with salsa and you want to get a thing of uh you need taco seasoning where's taco seasoning in here now i'm old-fashioned and by old-fashioned i mean new-fashioned and by new fashioned, I mean, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of, uh, a little bit lazy with it. <laughs> so I get old El Paso. Uh, I just get some like, like random pre-done, uh, like, like stuff. Pre-done, uh, 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 seasoning. That's the word. So this is our taco seasoning. So you've got refried beans, salsa, taco seasoning. That's literally, this This is going to be the recipe. It's like, it's so easy. So let's get ourselves some tortillas. Um, I, I learned recently there's a difference between tortillas and wraps. I didn't know that. And so I'm extremely, I'm extremely nonplussed by that discovery. Uh, so get tortillas because they're better for this. Wraps are a little too crunchy. So get yourself some tortillas. Again, this this can of refried beans will probably get you five to six burritos. Um, and then I do one pack of taco seasoning per can of refried beans. And then your salsa, you just kind of want to match it to two thirds of the refried beans. So you're literally just going to mix all this in a bowl. All this stuff. Here, I need a bowl. I need a bowl. Um, there you go. So we need a bowl. So you're going to take your bowl. You're going to take out the can of refried beans and just put it in the bowl. Put it in the bowl. Get your salsa, match that with about, again, two thirds of salsa. Just pour it in and then get your taco seasoning, open it up, put it in the bowl. And you literally just want to mix up this slop. It is slop. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Refried beans, salsa, it's a slop type food, but you mix it up. You mix it up. 
and you got a delicious slop. It's so easy. It takes two seconds. You're literally just mixing things. And then you just put it in your tortillas. Like, let me, um, here, let me get a, a, a thing. A winch. Right? That's what we want. The winch will probably do a rope. There we go. That's our, that's our tortilla. So you take your, your slop from your bowl, and you want to just take a little bit, enough to cover, like, genuinely to scale. Here, actually. Like, actually to scale around this much slop. Okay. <laughs> uh, around, like, a little more than that, but, like, not too... Ew. This is too tall, but like, get a get a decent amount of slop, right? You put it in and you fold you fold up your 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 tortilla. Fold it up, nice and tight. Uh, I I only recently like got decent at like wrapping burritos and stuff. You just kind of really want to get it tight. You're, you, some of it's gonna squish out. That's okay. You just you know if you if you've overfilled it a little bit, that's all right. That's just more filling for later. So once you've got these here, let's weld everything together. Again, a can's gonna get you like, hang on. A can's gonna get you like, I think I welded this to the ground. A can's gonna get you like six of these. So let's copy, let's get our six. Uh, we, we wanna advance dupe. Oh, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. That's not six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven. Sorry, I'm bad at math. I'm a cook, not a mathematician. So once you got about six of these, uh, your 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 bowl's probably going to be empty. You go ahead and just uh, put that away. You want to heat up your oven. You should be heating up your oven while you're doing this, by the way. You want to heat up your oven. Get some charcoals in here. You want to get your oven to like four fifty Fahrenheit. So once you got your oven. Uh, here, is this a tool for what I'm looking for? I don't think it is. I might have to do this one at a time. Ignite your coals in your oven. You know, get it all, get it all cooking. Put this 450 Fahrenheit should do it. Once your oven is preheated, please preheat your oven, by the way. It's, it's responsible. You gotta. Once your oven's preheated, you get your, your stuff. You put them on a tray, get some parchment paper under that tray. And you toss them in the oven. Oh, wait, you know what I can do? Oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. There we go. Put them on a tray, throw them in your oven, and this is going to depend on your oven's, like, capabilities. Mine sucks, so I put mine in for, like, 10 minutes, about. Uh, you can do anywhere between like seven and 10 minutes. Just take them out, feel the middle. The middle of it will be warm when they're done, like quite hot to the touch. Be very careful. And then they're just done. It's such it's such an easy recipe and you get so much out of it. It's so cheap, right? Like the salsa, you can get a jar of salsa. You can get enough for easily like three batches of this with one, like one of the tall jars of salsa. Uh, beans, refried beans are cheap. And so are seasoning, seasoning packets. Get yourself some like sour cream. Sour cream and dip it in there. And it's just, it's incredible. I literally made these last night. This was my breakfast today. I made some last night and then I had some more for breakfast. They freeze beautifully. You can put them on the fridge. These, this is, It's great for like a, a, a type of meal to just make a bunch in, in advance and pop them in the microwave for like three minutes and they're just done. It's so good. I like, look at it. Look at, look at this. Look how delicious this looks. Let's get some like scenic angles of this, of this delicious meal. Like, look at that. That's delicious. Uh, and then I'm going to show you another recipe here that's kind of in the same vein of uh, uh, Mexican food here. This is my mom's recipe. Now, this is probably the most involved recipe that's going to be here at all today. But it is super, super good. It is probably one of my favorite meals. It's made by my mommy. This is another one of my mommy's recipes. So if you ever make it, 
you have to say, thank you, Sophie, baby's mommy. Thank you, Sophie, mommy. I don't like that, actually. Don't say Sophie, mommy. But th say thank you to Sophie, baby's mommy, if you ever make this and, and kiss the sky so she hears it. So this is enchiladas. It's technically enchiladas. It's not really enchiladas. Enchiladas, I think, are like fried. This is not fried. And these are also like way bigger than enchiladas, like way bigger. So for ingredients, you're going to want some chicken breasts. Now we made chicken earlier. We know what that looks like. So let's get our chicken breasts. You want boneless, skinless chicken breasts for this. And you are going to want to make them actually with the recipe I talked about earlier. I should have kept these around. Uh, and you want to shred them. So your boneless chicken, boneless, skinless chicken breasts, again, as a reminder, uh, you cook, you, you pan sear them and then you fill it with chicken broth and then you put another like lid on top of your pan, let it cook uh, until they're done and then you shred it. So once these are done and shredded, you're gonna have a bunch of little chicken bits. Chicken bits. All right, we got our chicken bits. So this is your shredded chicken here. Uh, you want to take this shredded chicken and you want to mix it up. Preferably you should cook, uh, you should cook, you should chop the chicken beforehand, before cooking it and mix it with uh, the taco seasoning that we talked about earlier. So where's, where's our taco seasoning here? Um, you know what? I'm going to get a different brand of taco seasoning because I can't find it. We're going to get some taco seasoning. And you want to mix half of this packet with the chicken. Just half. Uh, I think. Well, it depends on how much chicken you have, I guess. Realistically, you should be using real spices. But again, this is for convenience. Anyways, mix it all up while it's cooking so it incorporates properly. You know, season it with the taco seasoning. Cook it up, shred it up. Boom, you got your chicken. Okay, so once your chicken's done, you need more ingredients here. You need some bell peppers. We want a green one and a red one. So once you got a green and a red bell pepper, you want to dice these. I recently actually got a gift on my throne, exclamation point throne. Somebody got me a, uh, a vegetable dicer. Let me show this thing off. This thing is a game changer. So it looks like this. Looks like this on the right here. This thing, you just pop it down. It dices your vegetables. It's perfect for bell peppers. It's fantastic. I highly recommend getting one of these. So you go ahead and chop these up. No enchiladas are baked in a sauce? Oh, well then maybe this does count as enchiladas. Anyways, chop these up again into little bits. Here, let's get our let's get our bits. Let's get our bits. Let's um get our bits. Got our red bell pepper bits and our green bell pepper bits. There we go. All right. So we got our diced bell peppers. You also are going to want to dice an onion. Uh, go ahead and get yourself an onion. Uh, I, I, I don't have a recommendation on what kind of onion to dice. I just do it. Put it back in the dicer. Put it all in the dicer. This is like, you're just dicing onions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't got any special tips for this one. You dice your onion. Does it matter? All right. So this is all done. You want to put this while your chicken, like when it's basically done cooking, uh, not basically done, like halfway. You want to add your veggies, all your veggies here. Uh, here, I need something to like sweep this in. You want to add your veggies to the chicken so they cook with it. You want these to be nice and soft when the chicken's done, but the chicken's going to take a little longer to cook. So go ahead and just, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Vegetables can be hard to work with at times. Um, you know, they're, they can make a bit of a mess and they can be hard to move. But, you know, just get yourself, get yourself into it and you, I believe in you. Uh, make sure that the nice, the seasoning from the, from the chicken, you know, spreads onto that stuff. Make it nice and yummy. But, yeah, add that all together. So, so far, just to recap, we got diced onion, diced peppers, diced chicken, or, or shredded chicken. Uh, all mixed in with taco seasoning, okay? Whatever, whatever freaking brand you want, don't matter. Once that's all done, that's your innards. Now we got to make a sauce. So get yourself a bowl. And in this bowl, you want to combine one third. Here, let me, let me open up G water. One third sour cream. I recommend my life hack is getting a uh, uh, non-dairy sour cream. Even though it sounds disgusting, it's actually incredible. So one third of sour cream. You want one third 
salsa. Wait, that's blue. One third salsa. So we got sour cream, salsa, and then one third. And this is the this is the kicker. This is the one you might not expect. This one might give you a little kick in the pants. This next one is cream of mushroom soup. This is a delicious creamy base for the sauce. I genuinely think this is like my mom's biggest brain move in the world. So you are mixing up salsa. Again, salsa, sour cream, and cream of mushroom soup all together. Give it a nice splash. <laughs> and then add, again, taco seasoning. Uh, you want to add either the other half of your original pack or a new pack, depending on how much of each you're making. But that's how you make your sauce. Taco seasoning, salsa, sour cream, and cream of mushroom soup. I swear to God, it's incredible. It's a, it's a wacky, it's a wacky thing you didn't expect, but it's so good. When you put in that seasoning, it just, it, it, it's creamy, it's savory, it's delicious. So you got all your bits, you know, you're bitted up. You want to go ahead and get your tortilla now. All right, let's go get our tortilla. Let's, let's, let's copy our tortilla. Uh, you want to get the biggest ones you can find, biggest soft tortillas you can find in the store. Because these things are going to be big. These things are going to have innards. Where's our freaking, uh, uh, that's the one. Biggest one you can find in the store. Biggest pack of them you can find. Get your ropes. You know, tie your, get out of here. Tie your stuff together. You know how it goes with tortillas. You tie them together, naturally. And then you want to get your innards and you want to insert them in. So, you know, we got your chicken bit. Green pepper. Red pepper. Onion. I don't remember which one onion is. Wait, this one was onion. This one's chicken. <laughs> so chicken, red pepper, green pepper, bell pepper, that is. Onions all inside. And then you want to sprinkle some cheese on there. Where's our cheese? We got cheese in here. Yeah, get some cheese here. Hang on. Get some cheese. Sprinkle that in there. There we go. Sprinkle your cheese in it. Some... Cereal. Where's the cheese? Where's like a nice cheesy color? Cheese! Perfect! All right. So, cheese, onions, red peppers, green peppers, chicken, shredded chicken, all all mixed up in a, in, a, in a delicious taco seasoning. Fold it up to the best of your ability. My cheese. I got runaway cheese. Uh, if, if you're having trouble, you can actually weld your ingredients to the, uh, to the tortilla. It tends to keep them, you know, more stable. You won't have as much spillage. So, go ahead and just fold that up. There we go. Just, just, just fold it up. Amazing. And you've got yourself your enchilada ready to bake. So we're going to go back to our oven, which is still preheated to, uh, actually, I have to look this up. I don't remember what my mom's recipe is for the, for the temperature. I think it's 375, but I, I I have to look this one. I'm so sorry. Hang on, bear with me. Where's my mama? Where's my mama? Uh, enchilada. Enchilada. Where's the enchilada recipe? I found it. 350. All right. Put your uh, put your put your oven to 350. So a little, a little cooler. You can cool it down from your from your burrito making. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make as many as you can, basically. Uh, this is this is going to be a lot. So what you're going to do is uh, you're, you're going to have a lot of these, right? Because you're going to have you're going to have a ton of fillings, you know, cream of mushroom soup. You're probably going to use the whole can, which means you're just going to have a ton of these. So let's say we've got eight. You might even have more than eight because this is a this is a hearty recipe. Luckily, these freeze impeccably. So once this is all ready, you get your sauce that we mixed up together. It's stuck. You get your so you get your sauce that we mixed. And you want to take a spoon and you want to gently just gently lather that on the top of your enchiladas, okay? Just gently, that's perfect. That's perfect. And be generous with it. Like be really generous with it. Uh, like just coat it. You're probably going to want to put these, uh, not on a baking tray, 
Uh, y'all do this at 350 for how long? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get to that. Uh, so you, 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 you don't want to put these in a tray. I tend to put these in a, um, well, I guess you would still call it a tray. But one of the ones I, it looks like this. <laughs> what are these called? Like a baking tray. Ones that have the lips at the sides. Uh, I, I, this, but really big. I don't know what the, if those have a different name, but it's still a baking tray. But law this, but large baking dish. Yeah, get a big one of those and stick them all in. They should be like cramped in there. I don't have a big version to show off. And then get your cheese. Get your cheese back. Uh, I need new cheese. Hang on. Get your cheese. Get your cheese here. Get your cheese. And you're gonna sprinkle this on top. And Val, you asked how long we cook this for. The answer is when the cheese done. So I, my, neither me nor my mom can tell you the amount of time you cook this for. Because you're just going to cook it until the cheese is bubbly. That is the exact recipe wording. I don't want to hear no complaints. That's, that's the recipe. Take it or leave it. Now, now just move these... <laughs> Now just move now just move your now just move your enchiladas into the oven. Uh very, you know, it's it's a messy food, but your dish should keep most of the food in. Now that that's that's the the sauce should just be pouring all over them. And uh it's 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 really just going to uh you're not even going to be able to tell. Oh my goodness. This is a cooking disaster. <laughs> Uh, oh boy, baby boy. It happens to everybody. The first time you may be cooking, it's not so easy about it. But that's totally okay. It's, uh, you know, beginner's practice, beginner's luck. Uh, you, you make the food. And then boom. Your, your cheese is bubbly and you have a, a delicious meal. Um, yeah, so once the cheese is bubbling on top, these things are like absurdly delicious. Again, I recommend dipping them in sour cream. You can also dip them in the leftover sauce, the sauce that we have spilled all over the ground. You can dip in that too, since that has sour cream in it, it's delicious. But personally, I've always loved that, uh, the, the tasting like warm food dipped in cold sauce. That's like my favorite shit. So yeah, I, 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 I recommend getting some sour cream. Again, the non-dairy stuff, I kind of stopped myself mid-sentence, but my, my, life t my life hack is non-dairy sour cream tastes better, lasts longer, and has a better consistency. I, I got really frustrated because I was getting sour cream a lot lately and it was really, uh, it was really watery. It's like they, the companies are watering them down or something. That's just a, a, a guess. That's probably not actually happening, but it wasn't, it, it was bad. And so one day I decided, you know what? I got lactose intolerance anyways. Let me get a dairy free sour cream. Now some of them suck, but I got one that was super good. What brand? I actually don't know if I'm allowed to say what brand <laughs> currently, uh, just based on the stream's sponsorship. But, uh, yeah, I, I, Got a non-dairy sour cream. So just experiment. Besides, it's probably Canadian anyways. Um, but uh, I, it's it's thicker than regular sour cream. It's like what sour cream, it's like the thickness it should be. And it tastes like al almost the same, but the differences literally taste better to me. But it's almost identical. And it lasts longer. It's just like a better option in my experience. I get like sad when I can, when I have to get regular sour cream now, cause regular sour cream, not only does it go bad fast, but it also like gets watery really quickly. Like the oils and stuff separate really fast. I, I can't recommend non-dairy sour. Yeah, not dairy free sour cream anymore. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, those enchiladas, probably one of my favorite foods. I recommend eating them with a fork and knife. They're so goopy. Uh, they're huge though. When you are digging them out of the pan, they literally, you should not be able to tell where each enchilada is because of the amount of goop and cheese you've put on top. Now, the trick is, if you feed this to somebody, they will think it's some sort of cheese sauce on the top. And they will say, this is so cheesy and delicious. Because that mushroom soup base, kind of, when you mix everything together, kind of looks a little bit like cheese. And then you put cheese on that. And it tastes so good that even if you don't like mushrooms, you're not going to taste it. You're just going to taste that delicious sauce. I... My mom has tricked like half our family members who f s like swear against mushrooms into eating those enchiladas. Literally, like I have a story. A couple months ago, I was driving with my grandpa 
And I was like, oh yeah, I made the enchiladas recently. And he's like, oh, the enchiladas, those were delicious. Oh, I love when your when your mom makes those. You know, they're uh, they're they uh, they're just so cheesy. And I was like, oh yeah, actually, there's not a lot of cheese on them. It's um, it's a it's a sauce made of cream of mushroom soup. And he like stopped. He like looked at me. He's like, it's what? Because he hates mushrooms. And I <laughs> he was flabbergasted. Um, it's incredible. Your mother is endangering innocent mushrooms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no, it's, uh, you know what? They already got souped. It is the world we live in. <laughs> but yeah, enchiladas. It's, it's so good. It is delicious. It's one of my favorite meals. Um, yeah. So to recap, today we've made, we made a roast and mashed potatoes to go with it. That roast was cooked for eight hours in a slow cooker with about two thirds of the water filling the pot, uh, as well as, uh, two packs of brown gravy mix mixed in with it to, to soak into the, to the meat as it finishes. Then we made a gravy from the drippings of that, from the remainder of the roast stuff. We made our mashed potatoes with some cream cheese and butter to really, really make them pop. We made some chicken and pork chops, both by uh, covering the pan while we're cooking them. With the chicken, we filled it with chicken broth to, to let it steam. But for the pork chops, we didn't. We just, we just uh, fried them with some oil, good old fashioned. We made some burritos and enchiladas, the burritos being super easy. The enchiladas needing some prep time, but being so worth the effort. These are the uh the, the 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 meals that i've been making lately these are stuff this is stuff i've been really excited to make i love food like genuinely it is i i don't think there's anything more beautiful than being able to share a delicious meal with like people that you care about i'm not even like talking up because this is a, like a uh just because this is a sponsored stream like i talk about this to duke all the time I, I get very emotional when I get to have a dinner with people I care about because it's so important to me. I think food is such a raw pleasure in life. It is it, it, There's so many opportunities to just have something that is just made for a yummy taste. And there's so many opportunities. And learning to cook has been profoundly important to me as somebody who I, – I never used to be able to cook. Like I, I would make craft dinner. I would make like grilled cheese. Like, and, and those are good. Don't get me wrong. I still make craft dinner. I still make grilled cheese. I'll stand by that. It's delicious, but it's not, it's, it's, there, it's not quite the same as a home cooked meal. And it took me years to make that jump into learning how to cook because I was always afraid of like my, my ingredients going bad or, or not sticking with my recipe or, you know, like or whatever, or, or just messing it up. Right. And like, HelloFresh's ability to have all those pre-portioned ingredients just like ready to go when you receive them, all you have to do is follow the instructions, is such a help. Because you don't have to worry about, you know, like, like let's say you want to make a new meal. You go to the store, you get everything, you come home and you realize you're missing one of the ingredients. And now all those ingredients are probably going to go to waste because you're like, you, the wind has been knocked out of your sails. You're learning how to cook. This way, you get everything you need. It's fresh, which not everybody has access to. Like I said, there's not a lot of fresh food where I live. And... You get to learn how to make something really incredible, and that can lead to you learning how to cook more often. And learning how to cook can save you a ton of money, and it can make you really, really happy. I, it's easy, it's fun, it's it's great. I, I'm really happy to be able to be sponsored by HelloFresh today, and I'm really happy to have this code work in more than just the U.S. I I swear I. I've been pushing for this, like as an individual. I have asked. I've asked around. I've been pushing to get these Canadian codes because people have come into my chat being like, I want to do this. I want to support you and I want to get yummy food. I live in Canada and I felt so bad every time because I live in Canada, but now we're going to get to share this together. We're all, we're all going to be able to eat. It's so nice to be able to cook for people you love. It is like, I, I love cooking for Duke. I, I love, I love just making stuff. It's just, it's just good. It's just good. You fully stopped eating out and started cooking from home for cheaper. You have HelloFresh to thank for that. That's awesome, Val. And I, I got to be honest, like I, 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 like eating out gets expensive, and we used to do it a lot. And just learning to cook has saved us a ton of money. It saved us space in the house because we've we've complained about our garbage takeout situation, and we don't have to worry so much about garbage now that we just cook from home. It like it say it, there's less there's less waste, and it's just it's just good. You know, it's good to cook from home. So seriously, if you're interested in HelloFresh, give it a shot. I it is it is a great deal. It is 30 bucks for a box of like three meals, each meal being two portions. That's like 
That's a lot of food for a really good price. That's the price of like eating out one, 30 bucks Canadian, I should say. It's like 20 bucks American. So it's like 20 bucks. The price of ordering, cheaper than ordering out at some places. And you get like three times the, three to four like six times the food, depending on how much you order out. Like it's, it's nuts. I, I really do think this is a great deal and uh, you should jump on it if you get the opportunity. But everything, all good things have to end. These are my recipes. I don't think I have any more recipes to show. I've made chili before, but it, it wasn't good. It wasn't very good chili. I don't want to share that recipe with y'all. These are real recipes that I've been making. All the jokes in Gmod, like they're, you know, it's all fun and games, but uh, like I, I do recommend making some of these things because it's easy. It's some of, like it's it, it it blew my mind. Those pork chops I made last night, for example, right? I talked about those. The pork chops is literally just you buy pork chops, you pop them open when you get home, you throw some salt, pepper, and that Greek seasoning on them. You leave them for a couple hours. You come back, you throw them on a medium heat pan with some oil, put another pan on top of that one to ca capture the steam, wait 10 minutes, and you have an incredible dinner just sitting there waiting for you. It's it's wild. Like it like Duke described it as like a $40 restaurant style like pork chop that we got to make at home for like nothing. Because eat like being able to cook for yourself is 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 delicious and it's cheap and it's it's fulfilling. So Will you get the same results if you use a lid instead of another pan? You will get better results because another pan will, will 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 let some of the steam leak out. I don't know. I made it with two pans, so like if 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 you make it with a lid and it tastes bad, then that's probably the lid's fault. I gotta say, um, yeah, no, I I I can't recommend this enough. I can't recommend learning to cook enough, and I think HelloFresh genuinely is a fantastic way to learn to cook. I, it's been something I've pushed, like I've tried to do for a long time and, 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 you know, failed at time and time again. And I'm super proud to be able to like share this stuff with y'all because I love food. I love food. You know, I, I, I'm happy. Anyways, like I said, everything does have to end at some point. So we're going to end today's stream. I will be opening the box that I got from HelloFresh on stream. I want to cook it on stream, uh, or at least some of it, obviously. There's like a bunch of food and they're not cooking everything. Uh, I want to cook on stream, but I don't think I can get reasonably a setup in the kitchen. I will I will keep y'all posted on that, but at the very least, I'm going to open it to show y'all what it looks like inside. And then if I can't cook it on stream, I will cook it and then I'll, off stream, I'll make a tweet and I'll talk about the food and, and post some pictures, what it tastes like, etc. So keep an eye out for that. Um, if you want to see what those meals I chose like look like, but... Yeah, thank you all so much for hanging out. Let's go drop a raid on somebody, shall we? Um, and our raid phrase is going to be enchilada black hole. <laughs> who's, raid, who's live right now? Let's go raid Markatoto. And our raid phrase is going to be uh, enchilada black hole. Everybody go ahead and copy and paste that into Mars chat. Thank you all so much for hanging out today. I had a blast. I uh, uh, If you want to support me, again, seriously, using that code, ordering HelloFresh, it helps me a ton, like more than you could know. So if, you know, if you got some money in your pocket, if you want to try something, again, it's the cost of eating out to try this. And I, I do recommend it. So, you know, you can cancel at any time if it turns out to not be for you as well. So thank you all so much. I hope that you, uh, you all have pleasant days. I hope you all have delicious dinners. And uh, Sophie, ba uh, hello, Sophie, baby, is my is my is my my HelloFresh code. That's gonna be live, by the way, for quite a while here. Uh, I I'll have to double check exactly how long. I'll tell y'all on Twitter. It's gonna be alive for a while though. So uh, about a month, probably. Yeah, about a month.